Once again, welcome back to the Cornerstone 2008 Phantom Toll Booth Press Tent. Joining us, joining us this afternoon, uh, supporting the album Salvation and Lights, Mike Ferris with your host, Brett McAlpin. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the press tent, and welcome to Mike Ferris. We're glad to have you here. It's a pleasure to, to meet you. Mike is going to be playing this evening at midnight over on the gallery stage, and, and also part of the main stage, uh, the, the big uh, 25th anniversary celebration. Uh, we are a full service press tent here. <laughs> Ask for Mountain Dew, you get it. So we want to give Mike a chance to uh, tell you guys his story of uh, how, how did you come to Cornerstone and find out about this? How did that connection come about? Well, we did, a, um, we did uh, some kind of buyers, festival buyers show conference in Nashville. And um, I guess the guys from Cornerstone were there and uh, Creation were there. And, big ticket and just all the festivals all over the country and we showed up with our full 11 piece band and uh, they dug it and, and bought it all right um hey can you guys hear him i hear a lot of me and not much of him hey can we get uh mike turned up in the sound out there thank you um, oh yes there we go that sounds better. Um, now I know you have a, a, an interesting story as to how you came to, uh, you know, making your new album that uh, you're going to be playing a lot of stuff off of, and just what the Lord has been doing in your life uh, these last few years leading up to that. And I just wondered if you could tell us uh, a bit about how the, the the path that's brought you to recording this album and. Uh, playing it now, what kinds of opportunities are opening up for you? And... Well, I was um, I was in a band called the Screaming Cheetah Wheelies for um, probably about 12 years, and um, and um, that, that became, that was kind of a divine thing that happened to me. Um, I rededicated my life and uh, asked God to show me what my purpose was in life, what I was supposed to be doing, and Cause I had no idea, and um, and here I was, a 21 year old kid, and, you know, and everybody had their lives figured out, what they were going to do, the whole plan, and everything. I had no idea, so he revealed to me that I, you know, this, you know, that music was going to be a part of it and everything. And within a year and a half, I had a record deal and was went from living in a park to being in the offices of Ahmed Erdogan at Atlantic. And um, but as soon as that happened. Um, I fell off the wagon. I was a drug. I, I was real big into drugs and alcohol, and, and um, so then it took me about 15 years to get off, get clean again. And uh, uh, so I've been clean now for three and a half years. And uh, but when I got clean, um, I, you know, had to kind of be the monk on the mountain for a little while and kind of read this, you know, just take stock of my life and figure out what I was supposed to be doing. And because I didn't know if music would be a part of my life again, you know, I was so destructive with it the first time. So um, I had this beautiful manager in my life um, who had been my manager my entire career, Rose McGaffey. And Rose come to me one day and she said, look, why don't you just forget about trying to make a record, you know, writing songs for radio or or trying to write songs, you know, forget about all these preconceived notions and ideas you have, you know, that people put in front of making the music and just do what you do, do what you, you you know, and I've been talking about doing this album for about five, six years, but I've been, I was too, too, uh, too down to do it. And uh, so she's, you know, she said, look, you just do this album you've been talking about doing. Here's the money, go do it. So she gave me the freedom and free, she just freed me up to do what I've always wanted to do and do the music that I love, which was this old spiritual music, turn of the century, 20s, 30s, 40s. And uh, 
So I just started recording it with no intentions of having a record deal or or uh, making anybody happy, just doing what I love to do. And uh, what a concept. I mean, I I did what I did that, that I've always wanted to do, and then everything just fell into place. Started getting record off, record deal offers. I didn't want a record deal. Um, we got, you know, now it's gotten like all these accolades and stuff and everything. And it's just been an incredible experience to be part of this music, to be a servant of the music, uh, as well as uh, the higher power of God, you know? It's just been unbelievable. Um, were there t was there a time, uh, like as you were starting to get back into music, were there certain things that uh, just really confirmed that for you that this is what you were supposed to, to be doing? Every day, every day there was something, you know? It was just, uh, the whole, the recording process was one where for the first time, every single, you know, when I'm recording something, I, I kind of leave a lot of things open-ended, you know? And um, with no real clear cut, I mean, I got a, a, a real concept, a definite idea of what I want to do, but I leave room for things to happen. And every day in the studio, it was just, it was unbelievable to, to watch these things take place. And, that's great um for people who might not be familiar with what you do or your sound what would you tell them they can expect tonight over on the gallery stage when you play what what kind of band you got with you um, well for tonight we got you know we only got uh the girls and the Crary sisters and uh the rhythm section and my piano player but what we normally have like what we brought to, to bonnaroo um was uh we were able to bring the, the full 11 piece band and what it is, it's it's uh, a full horn section, the McCray sisters. Uh, for the album, a lot of times we'll have a stand-up bass. Um, and it's real funky. It goes from New Orleans, turn of the century, New Orleans black gospel to uh, uh, Memphis stack soul kind of stuff. Um, and uh, But tonight, I mean, McCray sisters, they bring a lot, man, because they got such incredible voices and uh, they come from great heritage. Regina, the girl you're going to see tonight, she, uh, one of them, she sang for eight years with Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan discovered her when he was doing his gospel records and uh, took her all over the world and she's still real close with Bob and, and uh, she sang with Stevie Wonder and Rita Franklin and uh, you, you name it, everybody. And then, uh, and then Anne, she's incredible, but uh, and their dad was the founding member of Fairfield Four. You, you guys ever heard of Fairfield Four? Their dad was uh, Sam McCrary. And uh, so they got this beautiful, beautiful musical heritage. And uh, it's pretty awesome. All right, that's fantastic. Um, well, hey, look, uh, we have to cut this a bit shorter than we wanted to to uh, make room for some other bands we got on the schedule here. But. Uh, Folks who might not have uh, known Mike was coming up on the stage or might not be that familiar with him, I hope uh, you guys get a chance to check him out tonight at midnight. Uh, trust me, it's good. So anyway, thank you, Mike. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you, guys. Mike Ferris, ladies and gentlemen, check him out on main stage.